G'day. This week it's uh, still in the Alpine region. I don't mean to be dragging on this uh, whole area, but it is just so outstanding and I don't really want you to miss out on, in case you never come here, I would love you to be able to see some of what I've seen, which has been really spectacular. The other thing is, if anybody, any of you have been uh, here in the winter in the snow, wow, what a difference that must make. I would love to come back. In fact, I will come back here in the snow just so I can see the difference. I think it'd just be like going to a completely different place. Anywho, I'm going on a bit. So this week I want to take you to a place called Craig's Hut, which I love. I've been here before. And Craig's Hut is where they uh, originally they made a little building there for the man from Snowy River, the uh, famous Australian movie based on Banjo Patterson's There Was Movement at the Station and the word had got around that the cult from All Regret had got away, that one. So uh, yeah, I really wanted to show you about Craig's Hut and there's a couple of waterfalls there and there. Uh, one waterfall where you actually climb under and stand underneath it. <laughs> I'm doing it again. Anywho, let's go. Good morning, top of the morning to you. Now I'm still in the Victorian High Plains and I'm in a little township called Nug Nug. <laughs> Great name. And I've got to say it is Victoria's worst kept secret. So as I pulled in I expected to find maybe one or two vans in the area. Turns out I think there's about 50 vans here at the moment. Admittedly there is a bit of a convention passing through but still <laughs> as you come around the corner you see vans, campers, trailers everywhere. But it's a great little place, it's got everything, it's really reasonably priced and um, yeah, you're at the foothills of Mount Buffalo I believe and you're just uh, on a little river, so it's kind of got everything. I look forward to checking it out. It really looks good, feels good and it's nice and spacious. Oh and it has power if you want it. Good morning, top of the morning to you. I've arrived at a little campground called Carter's Mill Campground and uh, I'm not sure it's actually really designed for caravans. Look, you can squeeze them in and I've squeezed mine in. You could probably squeeze another two caravans, but it's mostly for tents. And uh, yeah, this is probably about as close as you can get to Mount Buller without actually getting in the full on ski resort, the whole nine yards. Now I base myself here because I want to pop out and see some of the uh, settlement, cut, settlement huts. Um, ideally, if time's available and if it's not too crazy to get out there, I'd like to get out to a place called Craig's Hut. Now that's a hut that was uh, specifically designed for a movie, an Australian movie called The Man from a Snowy River. Um, yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll try and get you out there and <laughs> try and sort myself out here. I've got a small crisis. The, my reversing camera is no longer working in the back of the caravan so that uh, <laughs> it increases my the pressure on my skills to be able to back up and everything by myself and the other thing is be frustrating too because you can't see the people behind you and that's something I always really like to do anywho enough of my problems let's settle in and uh, check it out bit of a grey day so uh, I apologize on behalf of for the lack of color in this video but it's uh, still a pretty nice place it's quite fresh and you can hear a few of the birds which is nice. The reason I left the uh, filming of this is because the caravan's on a bit of a slope and I've got the chains on so the chains are connected to the caravan connected to the car just in case it rolls back. I love the chocks I've got. I've talked about them a few times. They're rock solid so that's great but I thought uh, if we're going to lose the caravan might as well get some footage of it. So I've jacked it up, now I can release the chains and the, um, the chocks will hold it, so all good. I'm 
standing in front of Razorback Hut. It's also called Purcell's Hut or the nickname is the Razorback Hilton. It's built in the 1950s, uh, purpose built for the cattlemen to come up here and uh, have a bit of, um, you know, just a bit of luxury, I suppose, when they're grazing their cattle up here. So uh, yeah, great place, definitely worth checking out. And uh, if you're driving up here, it's like literally probably wouldn't be two kilometers from the main track, the main, uh, route that goes around the circuit. Just turning up uh, Clear Hills track, in other words I'm going to Craig's Hut. Four wheel drive only. Let's do it. allowed to camp here, obviously no caravans, you can bring a tent up and camp here. Here's a quick random tip for you. Uh, just about to head off and with the electric brakes, I've got the red arc system. And where you've got the little um, knob to be able to control how much braking you've got from the caravan, that should normally be green, ready to go. And then as you're putting your foot on the brake and using it, it goes red. However, this morning when I took off, it was um, flashing. Now, I've seen that problem before. And I happen to know from experience and I hoping that's all it was and that's exactly what it was with the trailer plug what happens is those uh, those little I don't know, <laughs> knobs I don't know what you'd call them sometimes that they'll as you're pushing them in pulling them out pushing them in, pulling them out you can actually close up that gap now if you close the gap then that's what causes some of the problems within your indicators not working or your in my case the brakes weren't working the trailer brakes weren't working so what I did was I tried with a screwdriver however the screwdriver didn't work because the, the it was flat edge but it was just too fat so what I did was I just got a, uh, a knife now if you're traveling with a partner there's more than likely they'll be saying don't use the knife <laughs> so you have to secretly use the knife because that's got a very thin blade and then what I did was I pushed it into here, just oh so slightly widened each one of those uh, gaps and then plugged it back in, turned it on, brakes fixed. Just going to give you a heads up, so I'm still on the circuit for um, Mount Stirling basically, it's Mount Stirling circuit, but uh, yeah, I'm on circuit road and I'm just about to walk a little bit 
of Craig's Hut walking track. Now I'm only doing it just to give you a bit of a taste of it. Uh, I'm not that keen on walking. It's about a 45 minute walk up and back I think or walk up. I'm not sure. I'll give you the details. But uh, I'm happy to drive around. <laughs> but while I'm here there's uh, quite a lot of uh, beautiful rosellas and uh, parakeets flying over. So um, probably won't be able to get into that footage but try to imagine beautiful greens and reds and really rich colours sort of spotted around here is the uh, dead snow gums which is part of uh, life I guess and uh, yeah this is well set up this little stop here has got a uh, toilets which is nice and nice little picnic area they even could cook up some snags if you wanted to sausages so uh, oh it's so cold it's about seven six or seven degrees here down uh, down um, sort of near Mansfield it's probably about uh, 18 so it was so cold before when I was breathing out <sighs> you can see the steam coming out or the fog or whatever it's called <laughs> let's get up that track while I think of it uh, they spray the blackberries up here so do be careful uh, it's a natural Australian thing I think we see them on the side of the road oh let's just have a chew of a couple of those blackberries so please don't they're sprayed and they can uh, make you sick if not make you worse than sick oh has a little taste of walking up Craig's hut track 45 minutes one way by the way I'm standing opposite the Craig's Hut, which is a great place to come and look at. Now they've got beautiful, beautiful mountains. It's just absolutely outstanding. And I've just got to be very careful where I walk because I was just walking down the track a minute ago and there was a little red-bellied black snake about yay long. I'm sure that they would give a nasty sting. No one could deal with that drama. So I don't want to go looking for it. And there's lots of tall grass here. So Craig's Hut, the history of it, basically uh, they made this particular hut deliberately for the movie. And uh, it's had a bit of a history, I think, pretty sure a fire came through a few years back and burned it down, so they put it back up again. It's a really popular tourist place, popular because you can bring your four-wheel drives up here and it's a bit of a challenge to come up that track, and also popular just down over my left shoulder here um, quite often the horses will get organised and they'll come up this particular track. The three horses have just arrived and uh, they're having a little rest, having some lunch, have a bit of a drink and um, then they'll head off again. If you manage to, I'm pretty sure that you can actually hire horses, but I have a feeling that'd be um, a little bit expensive. But wow, that'd be something you would never ever forget. So how good would that be? So yeah, you can come up here with the horses, come up here with the four-wheel drive, you can come up your basic drive, which is a bit of a challenge all by itself. Then you can leave, choose your exit, which apparently it is, uh, as they call it, pretty gnarly. So that means it's quite steep, bit of a challenge. And, uh, you know, once you're committed, <laughs> there's no turning around, so you've got to keep going.
just driving up a random track looking for a waterfall. Check this out. This is uh, one of a handful of huts that have been built in the Alpine area. Now back in 1927, a guy called Arthur Dale built this and uh, he was a forest officer. And because he was patrolling the area and had to spend some long days and into the night, he had decided to stay, build this so he could actually stay in it overnight. That's all the only purpose. He had a little fire and just a couple of uh, bit of food in there just to keep him going for a day or two. So uh, yeah, and in 2007, they rebuilt it because it got a bit dangerous and all fell apart. So uh, yeah, here it is today. You can check it out and come and uh, have a feeling you could have a fire in there if you wanted to at a certain time of the year. And they've got like little picnic tables here as well. So pretty nice place, only accessible by four wheel drive. I'm standing on the T intersection of Carter Road and Buttercup Road. What a lovely name for a road. You go down here by about uh, three or four kilometres and on the right hand side, suddenly you'll see a lovely house, like a little farmhouse and there's a big opening. There's no more trees, no more forest. They've got cattle grazing there. And then you'll see a house and just almost immediately after that, it's a series of uh, camps. They're absolutely gorgeous. They really are. They've got a little toilet facility there with the um, drop toilets. But the little creek running by, it's just, oh, seriously, you could, at a push, you could get a caravan in. You can definitely get a roof topper, a trailer or something, go and stay on a motorbike, go and stay out there with a, a you know, swag or stuff like that. And it is just, I was just talking to the ranger and apparently not that many people come, certainly during the summer. They usually go to the rivers because it's only a little creek, but you could swim in it. And... Uh, yeah, it was just, <laughs> serious. I could go and stay there for a week just because, as I said, you could probably get a caravan in here. So I'm probably about uh, seven kilometres from my camp and then another three out to the Buttercup area. In fact, there's a sign just near my camp that says exactly how much, how many kilometres. So uh, if you get a chance, pop out there. Oh, probably already mentioned, but it's just totally free. So nice and so relaxing. <music> Here's when hiking really does pay off. Now it's one kilometer in from the track and uh, you've got all of this and equally you've got to walk out that one kilometer. You can drive up to that stage, it's about three kilometers on a serious four wheel drive uh, track. So make certain you've got the gear like the four wheel drive. Otherwise you can walk all the way from my camp and it's seven kilometers, but either which way, I think well worth it.
the end of my video, you must just about be able to sing it along with me. Well, there you have it. <laughs> uh, look, I really enjoyed this week. Enjoy every week. Uh, I love the Alpine area and uh, where I'm staying, nice little cosy spot there. Once I got in, I didn't move. People came, came and went and uh, yeah, I love that little spot there. And it's not that well known, which is great. Uh, lots of opportunities I had, so I went out and saw Craig's hut. I did the circuit, love that. I found um, a waterfall that I could actually climb underneath, which was great. And so another waterfall that you could have walked to from my camp, but I found out you could also drive, so I drove. Anywho, if you found the video useful, helpful and or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, that would be great if you did it one day. And if you think the video is worth sharing, that too would be great. Until next time, this is Paul Will Drive, signing off.